Bayon Audios presents Scum Villains Self Saving System by Mo Xiang Tong Shu. Chapter 1 Scum Proud Immortal Demon Way was a male power fantasy of a stallion novel. To be more specific, Proud Immortal Demon Way was a monster fighting escapist cultivation novel with an incomparably ridiculous length, a golden finger that broke every rule, and a harem size nearing three digits, seeing as every single female character fell for the protagonist. The year's hottest stallion novel, there was no other. The male lead of this novel, Luo Binghe, was neither the kind who started heroic and invincible, like a proud dragon of the heavens, nor the kind who was a loser, a good-for-nothing without merit. Yet he managed to trend with tens of thousands of readers on Zhongdian literature, inspiring countless other male fantasy novels to follow in his footsteps. He was the kind of lead who was pitch-black, dark, and vicious, though before his heart blackened, he was the kind who suffered misery after misery. Next, let a veteran reader of this novel, Shen Yuan, omit the countless fan service details and concisely summarize the million-word epic for everyone. Immediately after birth, Luo Binghe was abandoned by his parents, swaddled in white cloth, and put in a wooden basin that was lowered into the Luo River. This occurred on the coldest days of the year, and it was only thanks to fishermen pulling him out of the water that he didn't freeze to death as a baby. Because he'd been drifting along the Luo in the season when it was choked with thin ice, he was given the name Luo Binghe. Luo Binghe spent his early years wandering the streets, hungry and cold, a dreary childhood. A washerwoman who worked for a wealthy family took pity on him, and since she had no children of her own, she adopted and raised him as her own. Mother and son were poor, and they suffered much humiliation at the hands of their rich patrons. Growing up in such an unhealthy environment became the foundation of Luo Binghe's future twisted personality post-darkening. His inclinations to fight over every scrap, seek revenge for the smallest grievance, and hide murderous intent behind a smile. Once he withstood the beatings of the family's young masters for a bowl of lukewarm meat congee. In the end, he was still too late, and he failed to give his adopted mother even a single taste before she died. By complete coincidence, he was selected for training by one of the cultivation world's four great sects, Kangcheong Mountain. There, he apprenticed under the Xu Ya sword, Shen Qingchu. Wo Bing He thought he could finally start down the righteous path. He couldn't have expected that Shen Qingchu was fair, without but foul within, trash of the lowest caliber. Shen Qingchu was jealous of Luo Binghe's unparalleled and exceptional talent, and he secretly feared his disciple, whose cultivation improved by leaps and bounds every day. He always found new ways to taunt and demean Luo Binghe, even enlisting the boy's peers to belittle him. Throughout these years of studying, Luo Binghe endured every humiliation. It was another heart-wrenching arc in his story, filled with blood and tears. After much difficulty, Luo Binghe managed to turn 17, at which point he finally participated in the event the cultivation world held once every four years, the Immortal Alliance Conference. However, at the conference, Luo Binghe fell victim to Shen Qingchu's scheming, and he tumbled into a crack in the boundary between the human and demon realms, the Endless Abyss. That's right, only then did the story truly begin. Not only did Luo Binghe survive, but within the Endless Abyss, he found his personal sword, the peerless mystical blade, Shin Mo. He also learned the truth of his origins. As it turned out, Luo Binghe had been born to the demon realm's saintly ruler and a woman of the human realm. Within his veins flowed the blood of the ancient, heaven-fallen demons, as well as that of the human race. His birth father, Tianlang Jun, had been sealed beneath a great mountain, trapped for all eternity. His birth mother had been a disciple from a righteous cultivation sect, but shortly following Tianlang Jun's sealing, she had been expelled on suspicion of having secret ties to demons. She had died from a postpartum hemorrhage after giving birth to Luo Binghe. But prior to her death, she had set her son adrift from the lonely ship she'd birthed him on. It was the only way she had been able to give Luo Binghe a chance to survive. Luo Binghe used Shin Mo to release his body's seal on his demonic blood. Then, within the dark abyss, he single-mindedly cultivated and enlightened himself to otherworldly techniques before heading back to Kang Chiang Mountain Sect. From there on out, Luo Binghe steadily headed down his dark path, never looking back. Every single one of his old enemies suffered great torment and died a horrible death by his hand. 
With his steadily improving ability to lie and scheme, Luo Bing had won the trust of many people, feigning compliance while secretly plotting against them. He seized power and rose in position, beginning a reign of terror. As the story unfolded, Luo Bing his heart blackened further and further. He returned to the demon realm and inherited the position of saintly ruler. Yet unsatisfied, he began to eradicate each one of the human realm's great righteous sects, bathing them in blood, annihilating all who opposed him. In the end, Luo Binghe became a legend spoken of for generations of immortals and demons, hailed for his unification of the three realms, the uncountable size of his harem, and his boundless number of descendants. Dumb fuck author, dumb fuck novel. With his dying breath, Shen Yuan spat this final curse. Who could have imagined that an upstanding young man like him, who had properly purchased the website's VIP currency and read the novel's official version, would find himself persevering before his untimely death to finish a novel so stallion, so money-grubbing and overly padded that it left him speechless with rage? How could he not curse? Proud Immortal Demon Way By Airplane Shooting Towards the Sky Just looking at that euphemistic handle smacked you in the face with a dirty feeling. Grade school level writing with landmines everywhere, breaking all suspension of disbelief. And Shen Yuan couldn't bear to call that incoherent mess of a world the author had built a cultivation setting. What kind of cultivation world had people using horses and carriages all day? What kind of cultivation world had people who, after achieving an idea, still needed to eat and sleep? What kind of cultivation world had an author who occasionally mixed up even the stages of foundation establishment and nascent soul? When faced with the protagonist, every single character acted like his total edgelord aura had devoured their intelligence especially Luo Binghe's master, Shen Ching Chu, that idiot among idiots, scum among scum. His only purpose was to dig his own grave, and he hadn't even managed to finish before he was killed by the protagonist instead. So why had Shen Yuan started this book, even going so far as to read it to the very end? Don't misunderstand. Shen Yuan didn't enjoy degrading himself. The reason he had persisted was also what had caused him the most frustration— this novel had an incredible amount of foreshadowing, plot lines everywhere, mystery after mystery, layer upon layer of red herrings. And at the very end, not a single one paid off. It was enough to make him want to puke a fountain of blood. Why were priceless herbs, spirit elixirs, and peerless beauties everywhere, like they didn't cost a cent? Why were the villains' speeches and poses as they dug their graves and got off all exactly the same? The dozens of maidens barely glimpsed, all of whom agreed to enter the harem. What happened to them? All right, skipping that last one for the moment. Who had been the culprit behind the scores of atrocities? Exactly what was the purpose of the unending list of characters so hyped up for being awesome and without equal? Why did none of them make an appearance, even at the very end? Towards the sky, bro, airplane bro, great master, can we have a discussion? Phil, in, plot holes, okay? Shen Yuan felt like he could have come back to life with the power of sheer rage. In the endless darkness, a mechanical voice sounded by his ear. Activation code. Dumbfuck author. Dumbfuck novel. System automatically triggered. The tone reminded him of Google Translate. Who is this? Shen Yuan looked around. It seemed like he was floating in a virtual space, one so dark that he couldn't see his hand before him. The voice came from all directions. Welcome to the system. This system operates in line with the design concept, you can you up, no can no BB. We hope to provide you with the best possible experience. It is our sincere wish that during your time, you can fulfill your desires, and in accordance with your wish, transform a stupid work into a magnificent, high-quality, first-rate classic. We hope you enjoy. In the midst of his ensuing vertigo, a man's voice asked lightly beside him, Shidi? Shidi, can you hear me? Shen Yuan shuddered and settled his mind, forcibly peeling open his eyes. The scene that appeared before him was a massive, whirling flurry. It took a while for everything to finally coalesce and slowly become clear. He lay on a bed, looking up. A white, gauzy canopy hung overhead, with finely crafted perfume pouches dangling from the four corners. Looking down, he wore a white robe of an ancient style. Next to the pillow lay a paper fan. Looking to his left, a handsome, elegant young man dressed in Xuanduan formal robes sat by his bedside, looking at him with concern. Shen Yuan closed his eyes, then sharply reached for that folding fan and opened it with a snap. He lightly waved it, 
fanning away the cold sweat pouring down his face. The man's eyes lit up with joy. Shitty finally woke up, he said warmly. Do you have any discomfort? Nothing too bad, Shen Yuan said with some reservation. The information overload was a bit much. He dazedly tried to sit up. As he did, the man quickly reached out to support his back, letting him lean against the headboard. Having read many of Zhang Dian's transmigration novels, Shen Yuan had long ago resolved that, if he one day woke up to find himself lying in a strange place, the first words out of his mouth before he understood what was happening definitely wouldn't be a carefree giggle. And, are you filming a movie? The props look so real. Your crew's really giving it their all. I e. The words of a person slow-wittedly trying to find their footing. Rather, Shen Yuan concentrated on acting like he'd just woken up, expression absent-minded. I... Where is this? The man startled. Did you sleep yourself into a trance? This is your Qing Jing peak. Internally, Shen Yuan was shocked, but he continued to act muddled. Why... Why was I asleep for so long? That's what I wanted to ask you. You were in perfect health, so how did you suddenly come down with a high fever? I know that with the Immortal Alliance Conference approaching, you've been training your disciples and are anxious to see results. But with Kan Chiang Mountain being such a well-established and renowned sect, even if one of our own didn't attend this time, no one would dare question us. Why concern yourself with empty words? The more Shen Yuan listened, the more something felt off. Why did these lines sound so familiar? No. Why did this setup seem so familiar? The man's next sentence, single and earnest, confirmed all his suspicions. Ching Chu Shidi, are you listening to Shixiong? At this moment something dinged, and the mechanical Google Translate-like voice from his dreamscape spoke again. The system was successfully activated. Bound role, Luo Binghe's master, Kang Chiang Mountain Sect's peak lord of Qingjing Peak, Shen Qing Chu. Weapon, the sword Xu Ya. Starting B points, 100. Fuck, 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 what bullshit is this? How come you're speaking directly into my brain? Does airplane shooting towards the sky know you're plagiarizing proud immortal demon ways setting like this? Of course, Shen Yuan didn't say this out loud, but the voice swiftly responded. You have triggered the system's execution command and have been bound to the Shen Qing Chu account. As the plot progresses, various point types will gradually become available. Please ensure that no score falls below zero, or the system will automatically mete out punishment. Stop. Enough. Shen Yuan was sure now. He'd hit the jackpot. He'd transmigrated. Transmigrated into a story he'd just finished. Moreover, even if it was a pitch-black stallion novel he'd hated, and even if it came with some kind of shitty system. As a 21st century veteran VIP reader of Zhang Dian literature, Shen Yuan had read various types of do-over and transmigration male power fantasy novels year in and year out. So theoretically, he could have happily and easily accepted this fact. But of all people, the shell he was borrowing just happened to belong to the male lead's scum villain master, Shen Qing Chu. This... Uh, made the situation rather complicated. The amicable-looking elder brother type beside him was Kang Chiang Mountain Sect's current sect leader, Shen Qing Chu's Shixiong, the Xuan Su Sword, Yue Qing Yuan. Fuck. There was a very important reason Shen Yuan emphatically thought fuck at the sight of Yue Qing Yuan. In the original work, Yue Qing Yuan's death had been caused by his good Shidi, Shen Qing Chu, okay? And what a horrific death it was. Tens of thousands of arrows had pierced him until not even his bones remained. At this moment, the victim was facing his own murderer and showering him with concern. The pressure was immense. On second glance, though, the story hadn't yet unfolded to that point. Yue Ching Wan was still in perfect health, meaning that at this point in time, Shen Ching Chu had yet to reveal himself as a hypocrite, and his reputation was still pristine. Yue Ching Yuan was a bleeding heart, nothing to be afraid of. Though his character ended up suffering quite a bit, during his read, Shen Yuan had been rather fond of him. He was just about to relax when a string of words floated eerily to the forefront of his mind. Within the dark, gloomy room a metal chain hung from a beam. At the end of the chain dangled a ring. The ring was fastened around a person's waist, if it could still be considered a person. This person's appearance was filthy and disheveled, like that of a madman. The most frightening thing about him was that all four of his limbs had been severed. His shoulders and thighs were only four bare knobs of flesh. When touched, 
he would let out a hoarse ah sound. His tongue had been torn out too, rendering him unable to form complete words. Proud immortal demon way, a selected passage on Shen Ching Chu's fate. Shen Yuan, ah uh, no, Shen Ching Chu, rested his forehead on his hand. He was in no position to lament the horrors of other people's deaths. The most horrific death was his own, okay? Henceforth, he had to avoid any critical errors. First, eliminate any mistake at the root. Second, from now on, cling madly to the male lead's thighs. Third, be a good mentor and helpful friend who is earnest and gentle in his teachings. Meticulously show the male lead every kind of concern. The moment Shen Ching Chu had these thoughts, a long string of alarms erupted in his mind, as if one hundred police cars carrying one hundred shrieking divine beasts were zooming past. It was so cacophonous that he shuddered, clutching his head in pain. Shitty, does your head still hurt? Yue Ching Yuan asked worriedly. Teeth clenched, Shen Ching Chu didn't answer. Warning. This proposed plan is incredibly dangerous and qualifies as a violation. Please do not attempt, or the system will automatically mete out punishment. The system shrilly notified him. How is that a violation? Currently, you are at the beginner level, and the OOC feature is frozen. You must complete a beginner level quest to unfreeze it. Before unfreezing, any act in violation of the original Shen Ching Chu character settings will result in a deduction of a fixed number of B points. As a semi otaku, Shen Ching Chu had seen a number of fan work related terms here and there. You know what I mean. So, of course, he knew the definition of OOC ad J, acronym for out of character, defined as breaking character or acting in a way inconsistent with the character's canonical personality. In other words, before that whatever feature gets unfrozen, my behavior and actions can't differ from what Shen Qing Chu would do. Correct. This system had already let him transmigrate into Shen Qing Chu's shell, replacing him, but it still cared about a detail like being O C. -O -C. You just said something about how the points can't fall below zero. If they do, what happens? You will automatically be deported back to your original world. Original world? But in Shen Yuan's original world, his body had already expired. In other words, if he lost all his B or whatever points, what awaited him was, in short, death. Well, if he just ignored the male lead and avoided doing anything, things would be fine, right? He raised his head and scanned the room. But among the disciples waiting on him by his bedside, he didn't see anyone that matched Luo Binghe's description. Feigning unconcern, he said, Where is Luo Binghe? Yue Ching Yuan paused, giving him a strange look. Shen Ching Chu remained straight-faced, but was secretly filled with glee. Was it possible that the time wasn't ripe? That the male lead had yet to apprentice to Kang Chong Mountain sect? Shidi, don't be angry, said Yue Ching Yuan. An ominous premonition stirred in Shen Ching Chu's heart. Yue Ching Yuan sighed. I know you don't like him, but that child's already worked hard enough, and he hasn't made any significant mistakes. Don't punish him any further, all right? Hearing this, Shen Ching Chu's lips felt dry. He wet them and said, You can just say it. Where is he? Yue Ching Yuan was silent for a moment. Whenever you finish stringing him up and beating him, haven't you always shut him in the woodshed? Shen Ching Chu's vision went dark. In his previous life, Shen Yuan had been well off growing up, and he'd basically qualified as a modest example of a second-generation rich kid. His two older brothers had been set to inherit the family business, and he'd doted on his little sister. The entire family had been very close. From early on, he'd known that even if he idled the rest of his life away, he'd never want for food. Perhaps due to this carefree upbringing, devoid of either competition or pressure, he came to believe that ranking in the top ten of a competition was good enough, so long as it had more than ten people. Therefore, he'd never understood what scum villains like Shen Ching Chu were thinking as they dug their own graves. The original Shen Ching Chu had both training in cultivation and the qualifications to prove his experience, not to mention the self-restraint to put up a facade. He wanted for neither standing nor reputation, and with the support of the world's largest sect, he would never want for money either. So why did he have not even a speck of the poise expected of an immortal? Why did he act like one of those bitter courtyard complex concubines with too much time on their hands? Why was he so unable to tolerate the main character, no matter how innocuous his behavior? And why did he spend day in and day out scheming up new torments for him, even getting others to do so in his place? Even if Luo Binghe was blessed with heavenly talent, 
and even if his aptitude was exceptional to the point that he was more or less cheating, there was still no need to envy him to that extent, you know? Still, the blame didn't really lie with Shen Qingchu. It lay with the author. These types of villains were everywhere in the novel, as numerous as carp in a river. It was just that Shen Qingchu's character had been especially detailed, and especially rotten. What could you do, though? The ultimate boss in this book was the protagonist himself. How could a firefly outshine the sun and moon? The cultivation world had dubbed Shen Qingchu the Xu Ya Sword, so naturally he had the appearance and bearing to match. Even now, glancing left and right into a blurry bronze mirror, Shen Qingchu was quite satisfied with what he saw. It was a fine-featured face with pitch-black eyes and brows, thin nose and lips, and a most scholarly air. Combined with a slender body and long legs, he could more or less be considered beautiful. Though his real age was unclear, this was a cultivation novel. Shen Qingchu had achieved mid-core formation, which meant he'd perfectly preserved his youthful appearance. He was certainly many times better looking than Shen Yuan's headcanon for him. He still couldn't compare to Luo Binghe. The moment Shen Qingchu thought of Luo Binghe, he was instantly struck with a pounding headache. He wanted to go see Luo Binghe, who was currently shut in the woodshed, but as soon as he took a single step, that ear-piercing notification rang once more in his mind. Warning. OOC warning. Shen Qingchu would not take the initiative to visit Luo Binghe. Fine. I'll get someone else to bring him. No problem there, right? Shen Qingchu snapped. He thought for a moment, then called, Ming Fan. A youth around 16 years old, tall and thin, promptly ran in through the door. This disciple is here. What instructions does Shifu have? Shen Qingchu couldn't help but send a couple more glances his way. Ming Fan's appearance was respectable enough, it was just that his face was a bit unfortunate, with a sharp mouth and sunken cheeks. Internally, Shen Qingchu tisked and lamented, as expected for classic cannon fodder. This was the most senior of the original Shen Qingchu's disciples, Luo Binghe's Shixiong Ming Fan. This was also the legendary lowest level of cannon fodder. Needless to say, when it came to things like locking Luo Binghe out of the dorms late at night, or feeding him false techniques on purpose, Ming Fan was the ever-present perpetrator. Whenever Shen Qingchu felt inclined to torment Luo Binghe, Ming Fan was always his most useful assistant and most enthusiastic supporter. Knowing that this child's fate in the original work wasn't much better than his own, Shen Qingchu couldn't help but look at him with the pitying gaze of a fellow victim. Go bring Binghe here. Ming Fan was plainly unnerved. Whenever Shen Qingchu had called for Luo Binghe in the past, he'd always referred to him as that little beast. Ungrateful brat. This wretch, or whelp. He'd hardly even used Luo Binghe's full name more than a few times. Where had this sudden change come from? But Ming Fan didn't dare question a command from his Shifu. He jogged to the woodshed right away and kicked the door twice. Get out. Shizun's calling you. Shen Qingchu paced within his room exhaustively examining the system within his mind. B-points, also known as points awarded for being a badass. The more B-points one accrues, the more magnificent, high quality, and first-rate the work has become. Then how can I raise my B-points? 1. Change the nonsensical plot and raise the average IQ of the villains and supporting characters. 2. Avoid landmines that break suspension of disbelief. 3. Ensure the main character's satisfaction points. Four. Discover and finish hidden plot events. Shen Qingchu analyzed each option one by one. In short, not only did he have to clean up the original Shen Qingchu's messes, the Shen Qingchu, who'd had a veritable mob of enemies coming for his ass, he also had to stop other characters from creating more messes. He didn't even know if he could preserve his own sorry life. And here he still needed to ensure that the main character preserved his o penis, time in the spotlight, and harem size all those unsolved mysteries. Those plot holes the author had neglected to fill, and now Shen Qingchu had to grab a shovel and sweat away, filling them in himself. Ah, uh, great master airplane shooting. Towards the sky had claimed that proud immortal demon Wei's purpose was perfectly clear, and that each word had been written with a single goal in mind, to satisfy the reader. This was especially evident in how, in the future, the OP male lead would play innocent, a wolf in sheep's clothing hunting other wolves, exacting revenge against lowlifes, generating enough satisfaction to overturn the heavens. Thus the work's popularity had swelled rapidly as it grew longer and longer, until no foot-binding cloth could compare to its length. 
Keeping track of the plot had been stressful even as a reader. Insane landmines were everywhere. How could he manage to avoid all of them? What kind of plot would qualify as not nonsensical? Shen Qingchu asked. The standard is subjectively determined. It depends on the reader's reactions. Then how many points do I need to collect to launch a beginner-level quest? The timing is situationally determined. When the requirements have been met, the system will automatically notify you. Subjectively determined, situationally determined. What an all-purpose remedy. Shen Qingchu scoffed, then upon hearing the door open, looked back to see a youth slowly walk in. Shizun. The youth spoke respectfully, even though his movements were unsteady, and he still managed to stand perfectly straight. The small smile that had been forming at the corner of Shen Qingchu's mouth froze. He was definitely dead. Before him was the face that would, in the future, infatuate everyone who saw it, from 80-year-old women to infants still in their swaddling clothes, the Gary Stu protagonist's face, and he'd beaten it to this extent? He was dead. But even though this face bore clear evidence of abuse and was covered in injuries, the protagonist was, as expected, still the protagonist. Luo Binghe's two eyes were as bright as morning stars, a tender shoot of a handsome young man, that firm yet humble countenance, demonstrating his noble and unyielding spirit, that pencil straight back and stance, evincing a proud core that would rather break than bend. In that instant, a flood of parallelisms and other stylistic devices flooded through Shen Qingchu's heart, passage after passage jumbling together into countless stanzas of praise that almost spilled forth out of his mouth. Luckily, Shen Qingchu managed to rein it in, albeit while internally yelling about how close he'd come. The underlying hardware of this protagonist's halo of excellence was really too much. He almost couldn't hold back. Shen Qingchu's mouth twitched as he watched Luo Binghe limp through the door, then struggle to kneel. I can't afford your submission. If you pay respects to me today, you are definitely going to kneecap me in the future. No need. Shen Qingchu stopped Luo Binghe, and with a flick of his wrist, he tossed over a small bottle. This is medicine. He paused before adding in a mocking tone. Don't let anyone see. They might think my Qingjing peak abuses its disciples. Shen Qingju had assumed his role quickly. Even though he'd done something daringly subversive by handing over medicine, he'd also done it with a nasty attitude. Therefore, it was passably in line with Shen Qingju's hypocritical nature, his tendency to do evil while he simultaneously feared others finding out. Indeed, the system didn't send an OOC notification. Shen Qingju let out a sigh of relief. Luo Binghe had expected that his master had called him for further instruction. He never would have thought he would be offered medicine. At first he froze. Then he respectfully received the small bottle with both hands and said with honest gratitude, Thank you for the medicine, Shizun. At this point in time, Luo Binghe's face was still full of innocence, his smile sincere and gentle like the warm dawning sun. Shen Qingchu stared at it for a while, then turned his head away. Prior to his darkening, this male lead's personality was that of a model, an upright youth. Shine a bit of sunlight on him, and he'd glow. Give him a scrap of goodwill, and he'd return it tenfold. That type. It would not have been an exaggeration to call him a little lamb. This disciple will henceforth redouble his efforts and not let Shizun be disappointed, Luo Binghe happily continued. Eh, no. If you redouble your efforts, I'm guessing your original master would really be disappointed. If Shen Qingchu hadn't read Proud Immortal Demon Way... He would have found the sight of this scene heart-wrenching, and he probably would have shed a couple of sympathetic tears for Luo Binghe's plight. As it was, he'd seen everything from beginning to end from an omniscient perspective, so he'd been privy to Luo Binghe's plentiful and colorful thoughts post-blackening. To wit, Luo Binghe's current pitifulness directly correlated to the future ferocity of his wanton laughter as he ground his foot into your head. Though he would wear the mask of a kind and humble gentleman, inside... All his thoughts would be about how he'd rip out your tendons, pull out your bones, peel off your skin and hang it all out to dry. Luo Binghe smiled. Today, the humiliation this disciple once suffered will be returned one hundredfold. For injuring my hands and feet, I'll tear off your limbs and grind them to dust. Proud Immortal Demon Way. Selected Passage Number Two. After that, he had an actual fat carved Shen Qing Chu into a human stick. Bing He. How's your cultivation progress? Shen Qingchu asked in a deliberately aloof tone as he moved to sit in a sandalwood chair. 
With that single binghe, he terrified himself to the point that frightened goosebumps rose all down his back. Luo Binghe's back also shook with a clear shudder, but he still managed a smile tinged with shyness. This disciple is stupid and still failed to understand. That was about right. With a fake cultivation manual, the fact that he hadn't yet suffered a QE deviation was all thanks to his incredible protagonist-level durability. If he'd actually understood anything in that manual, it would have been a miracle. Boy, come hang out with me. Shen Qingchu yelled within his heart. This master will deliver unto you the correct techniques. That demonic system's warning notification started blaring incessantly. I was only thinking about it, Shen Qingchu said to the system. Of course I know it would be a violation. Out loud, he spoke casually. Today, this master punished you out of his own impatience. After all, time waits for no one. Now that I think about it, you've been under me for a while. How old are you this year? This disciple is fourteen, Luo Binge obediently replied. Eh, fourteen, huh? That meant that at this point, this master and this disciple, Shen Qingchu and Luo Binghe, had already passed the incident at the mountain entrance. There, the latter had been forced to kneel as punishment. It meant they had also passed the incident, where Luo Binghe's fellow Qingjing Peak disciples had pummeled him en masse, as well as the incident where he'd back-talked Shizun and been strung up and beaten, in addition to the incident where he'd ruined the peak's talismans and been punished with hard labor. Such a glorious track record. Shen Qingchu waved goodbye to his last hope of survival. Shen Qingchu rested his forehead on one hand and waved Luo Binghe away with the other. I wish to be alone. Shen Qingchu was an easygoing person. Since his residential address had already changed to proud immortal demon way, and since he'd already kicked the bucket in his original world, he figured he might as well try making it work here. He'd arrived in a cultivation setting, received a body with decent martial ability and swordsmanship for free, and was also part of a famous righteous sect. If he wanted to stand out, he could stand out. And if he wanted to lie low, he could hole up on Kang Chung Mountain Sex Ching Jing Peak and be a recluse. What was there to complain about? The only slightly difficult thing would be finding a girlfriend. In this sort of male power fantasy stallion novel, any woman inevitably belonged to the male lead, as long as she wasn't ugly. Everyone knew this. Still, Shen Ching Chu was a man of few needs. He would have been satisfied just idling away to a ripe old age. In that way, it wouldn't be that different from how his previous life had been going. However, while Luo Binghe was a factor, making a name for himself was right out. If Shen Ching Chu remained anywhere near the original work's setting, even if he found some non-existent paradise to seclude himself in, once Luo Binghe took power, he'd still be able to carve Shen Ching Chu into a human stick. It's not that I don't want to cling to the male lead's thighs, but who made him so damn black-hearted? He's the type who seeks thousandfold retribution. After his daily cursing at Great Master Airplane, Shen Ching Chu quickly set some goals. In short, familiarize himself with his environment, work with the system as much as possible, diligently pursue more accomplishments, earn B points, and unfreeze the OOC function as soon as possible. If the situation started looking grim, he'd have to seek out an alternative strategy. Kang Chung's twelve peaks were like twelve giant swords forged by nature, steep and magnificent, piercing the skies. Shen Qingchu's Qingjing Peak wasn't the tallest, but it was the most tranquil, heavily forested with tall bamboo. On top of that, as basically all of Shen Qingchu's disciples needed to learn the four scholarly arts of Guqin playing, Go, calligraphy, and painting, from time to time the clear sounds of reading and the murmur of the Guqin would drift on the breeze. It was an excellent destination for scholarly youths, steeped in ancient arts and literature, and perfectly aligned with the needs of the original Shen Qingchu, that poser. As Shen Qingchu passed a group of disciples, they respectfully asked after his health. He schooled his countenance to match the original's cold, aloof look, nodding slightly while walking with his hands clasped behind his back. He managed to get by with this, troubled only over how he was supposed to match the book's names to these wavering faces. This wasn't Shen Qing Chu's most pressing concern, however. That was self-defense, and for that, he needed to figure out how to employ the original flavor's martial ability and swordsmanship. If he remembered correctly, before Luo Bing he darkened, Kang Chang Mountain Sect suffered a succession of significant incidents, things like demonic incursions, 
and the Immortal Alliance Conference. Shen Ching Chu would have to deal with all of them. If all he had to work with was a shell with no cultivation ability, forget following the plot. The male lead wouldn't have to lift a finger before an insignificant no-name monster got him killed. Shen Ching Chu walked deep into the forest, alone. Only after confirming no one was in sight did he remove the sword at his waist. He held the scabbard in his left hand and the hilt in his right, and he slowly pulled it out. Xu Ya had been with Shen Ching Chu since he was young, and newly known, and it could have been considered prestigious unto itself. The flash of its blade was snow white, luminous but not blinding, definitely a top-class armament. When one channeled spiritual energy into the weapon, the blade glowed faintly. As Shen Ching Chu pondered exactly how to channel spiritual energy, the sword in his hand began to shimmer white. It seemed like he'd inherited the original's cultivation and martial abilities as well. His mind had filled in the gaps without him needing to consciously remember. Wanting to see Xu Ya's power, Shen Ching Chu casually slashed once. Who knew a single slash would be so terrifying? The sword's arc dazzled like a flash of lightning released from his palm, so bright that even UV 400 sunglasses wouldn't have saved him if he hadn't closed his eyes. When he opened them again, he beheld a deep ditch that had been carved into the ground, as if it had been split by lightning. Holy shit! Shen Ching Chu remained expressionless, but his heart surged with exhilaration. So damn awesome. Power worthy of a character who was a peak soul master. With this level of cultivation, if he diligently trained for the next twenty years, then maybe in the future, as a last resort, if he absolutely had to face that overpowered Luo Binghe, he might just be able to flee in disgrace. Yes. All he wanted was to be able to flee in disgrace. He wanted to practice more, but he heard the sound of subtle footsteps snapping dry twigs. In truth, that sound was still a long way off, but his five senses were highly sensitive, and it would have been difficult not to notice. Shen Ching Chu studied that deep ditch in the ground, then sheathed his sword with a clink before hiding himself within the greenery. The footsteps came closer and closer. There was more than one person. As expected, a moment later, the first face to appear was Luo Bing's, seeming to shine with its own light. The first sound, however, was the crisp, delicate voice of a young maiden. Aluo! Aluo! Look, there's a huge ditch in the ground here. Upon hearing this nickname, Shen Ching Chu almost staggered from his hiding place. Shen Ching Chu's youngest female disciple, Ning Ying Ying, the system said concisely. What use was that introduction? Shen Ching Chu hissed. Everyone knows that only one person addresses Luo Binghe that way. The pretty girl following Luo Binghe came into view as well. She looked slightly younger than Luo Binghe, lovely and adorable, her braided hair bound with orange ribbons as she ran and skipped, brimming with naivety. Every proper cultivation novel had to have a charming young Shimei type. This young Shimei inspired some complicated feelings in Shen Ching Chu. This was because he had designs on Ning Ying Ying. Ah, no. More like the original Shen Ching Chu had designs on Ning Ying Ying. Shen Ching Chu's character settings were stuck on Shady Hypocrite. Since on the surface he looked pure-hearted, free of desire, and immune to wicked temptations, then beneath that surface he had to be immoral, shameless, scummy, and despicable. He was a teacher, but he harbored filthy intentions toward his obedient and cheerful disciple. He tried to carry them out several times in the story, and he very nearly succeeded. One can, however, imagine the result of daring to try to get a taste of the male lead's woman. While reading, Shen Ching Chu had thought it a little strange that Luo Binghe hadn't tried to castrate the creep. His failure to do so absolutely didn't jeeve with Binghe's dark charm. So he'd gone to the comment section and joined the mob in flooding it with posts to the tune of, Please castrate Shen Ching Chu. No castration, we unsubscribe. Upon reflection and closer consideration, Shen Ching Chu was profoundly terrified. If the appeal had succeeded then, he'd absolutely have had to chop off the hand with which he had made those posts. Luo Binghe glanced over once and offered only a half-hearted smile. But Ning Ying Ying wanted his attention, and she fumbled around for something to say. Tell me, Aluo, which Shixiong was practicing their sword glares out here? On Qingjing Peak, I'm afraid only Shizun has this level of cultivation. Luo Binghe answered as he picked up an axe and started chopping at a tree. He only spoke one line, then paid her no more heed. His focus was entirely on his own actions, as he raised and lowered the axe, chopping in earnest. These trees were neither thin nor weak, 
and the axe was half rusted. At this time, Luo Binghe was only 14 years old, so chopping was tremendously taxing. Soon, sweat poured down his face. Ning Ying Ying sat on an old log, watching him with her face propped in her hands. After a while, she was bored again and wheedled. Ah Luo, ah Luo, play with me. I can't. Luo Binghe didn't even have the time to wipe away his sweat. He continued to swing the axe as he spoke. Our Shixiang told me that after I finish chopping today's wood, I also have to carry the water. If I finish chopping quickly, I can clear out some time to meditate. Our Shixiang are really awful, always making you do this and that. It looks to me like they're bullying you on purpose. Ning Ying Ying pouted. Humph, I'll go back and tell Shizun. Once I do, they won't dare bully you anymore. Until this point, Shen Ching Chu had been treating this experience like he was at a shoot for a scene of a proud, immortal Demon Way drama, just passing through and enjoying a tale of two childhood sweethearts. Upon hearing this, he paled in shock. No, 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 you absolutely can't come tell me. What am I supposed to do? I can't be OOC. Who exactly should I punish? But at this time, even while the young Luo Binghe was experiencing the full depth and breadth of humanity's hardships, he still had the pure heart of a white lotus. He shook his head at Ning Ying Ying. Absolutely don't. I don't want to trouble Shizun with these small matters. Our Shixiong don't mean any harm. They just see that I'm young and want to give me more chances to train. In that instant, Shen Qingchu could almost see 10,000 rays of light behind Luo Binghe. He couldn't help but back up three steps, unable to look directly at a male lead who had achieved such a transcendent state of being, who'd attained such profound enlightenment. While Ning Ying Ying chattered, Luo Binghe finished chopping his quota of wood. Putting the axe away, he found a random patch of relatively clean ground and sat down cross-legged with his eyes closed. Inside his heart, Shen Qingchu released a long sigh. In truth, even during the early, misery-ridden part of the storyline, the protagonist's overpowered nature had already started to emerge. The cultivation manual Ming Fan had given Luo Binghe was a fake. The more he trained by following it, the more his techniques should have degraded until they were absolute rubbish. But with his peerless talent and his body's half-demon blood, Luo Binghe had managed to eke out a path of his own by complete accident. It was entirely unscientific. While Shen Ching Chu sighed, there came the sound of another set of jumbled footsteps. As soon as he heard them, Shen Ching Chu knew that what was coming wouldn't be good. Ming Fan stepped out into the clearing, leading several low ranked disciples. Upon seeing Ning Ying Ying, he delightedly strode up and grabbed her hand. Xiao Shimei, Xiao Shimei, I finally found you. How could you come to a place like this without saying anything? The backside of the mountain is so large. What if some dangerous beast or poisonous snake leapt out? Come, Shixiong has something fun to show you. Naturally, Ming Fan saw Luo Binghe silently sitting nearby, but he ignored the other boy as if he were nothing but air. However, Luo Binghe, being very well-mannered, opened his eyes and spoke. Shixiong, I'm not afraid of poisonous snakes or dangerous beasts. Ning Ying Ying giggled. Besides, isn't A Luo with me? Ming Fan swept his gaze toward Luo Binghe, squinted, and scoffed. To Shen Ching Chu, Ming Fan's thoughts couldn't have been clearer. He heard the affectionate way Ning Ying Ying addressed Luo Binghe, and in that moment, his annoying shitty had become even more irritating. In the end, Ning Ying Ying had a young girl's disposition, completely unable to take a hint or read the room. What fun thing does Shixiong have? She asked, head tilted. Hurry up and show me. Ming Fan became all smiles. He unfastened a deep green jade ornament from his waist and held it in front of her. She may. My family just came to visit, and they brought me lots of high-quality and interesting little trinkets. I thought this one was particularly pretty. I'll give it to you. Ning Ying Ying took it from him and examined it closely in the sunlight shining through the leaves. Well, do you like it? Ming Fan asked eagerly. From his hiding place, Shen Ching Chu finally remembered. This was that scene. Not good. He shouldn't have come. Danger. He couldn't be blamed for not remembering clearly. How could someone who'd cursed dumbfuck author, dumbfuck novel, remember ancient content from the beginning of a serialized novel that had been running for four years and covered an in-narrative span of 200 years? He'd spent 20 days binging the novel from start to finish, 
so he had clean forgotten that wump-filled arc of pointless abuse that covered Luo Binghe's beginnings at the sect, okay? Ning Yingying had absolutely no idea what was high quality and what wasn't. After looking nonchalantly at it for a while, she tossed the jade ornament back. Ming Fan's smile froze on his face. What? This color is so ugly. The one A Luo has is prettier, Ning Ying Ying said carelessly as she wrinkled her nose. Not only did Ming Fan look unhappy, but Luo Binghe, who'd been wisely pretending to not exist, trembled lightly as his eyes snapped open. Does Shidi also wear this kind of thing? Ming Fan spat through gritted teeth. Luo Binghe hesitated slightly. He hadn't managed to answer when Ning Ying Ying barged in. Of course he does. Every day, he wears it close around his neck. It's his treasure. He refuses to even let me look at it. Although Luo Binghe was usually so composed, at this point his expression also changed. He unconsciously clutched the goddess of mercy Guan Yin pendant around his neck, hidden beneath his clothes. Your IQ and EQ, young lady. The male lead is taking all the collateral damage. Ning Yingying absolutely hadn't considered the consequences of these words as she said them. She'd only been thinking of how she always saw Luo Binghe wearing that jade guanyin close to his skin, never parting with it. Girls in particular invariably wanted to get their hands on the things their crushes treasured, which they hoped would confer upon them the satisfaction of being in a special position. But Luo Binghe simply refused to give her that recognition. Displeased, she'd brought it up in this half-sweet, half-brazen manner. Of course he'd refused, okay? Luo Binghe's washerwoman mother had spent almost her entire life savings to finally, with great difficulty, give her son the consecrated protective charm she wanted for him. It was the only bit of warmth in Luo Binghe's dark world, always by his side, and even in the future when he was at his darkest, it could summon up his last dregs of humanity. So how could he randomly hand it to anyone else? Ming Fan, both angry and jealous, advanced a few steps. Luo Shidi, you sure are stuck up refusing to show Ning Yingying Shimei your pendant, he snarled. If this keeps up, when we face strong enemies in the future, will you refuse to even lend a hand? Young man, there's definitely a logical gap between your first and second lines. It's fine if he doesn't want to. Shixiong, don't bully him. Ning Yingying hadn't thought things would turn out like this, and she anxiously stamped her feet. How could Luo Bing have best Ming Fan at this point? Not to mention a group of junior disciples who were Ming Fan's lackeys were also ganging up on him. In a moment, that Jade Guan Yin fell from Luo Binghe's neck into Ming Fan's hands. Ming Fan raised it up for a look, then suddenly laughed loudly. Why, why are you laughing? Ning Ying Ying said, confused. I thought it had to be some rare treasure for him to protect it so fiercely. She may guess what it is. Ming Fan tossed the Jade Pendant into Ning Ying Ying's hands, positively gleeful as he chuckled. It's a counterfeit. Counterfeit? Ning Ying Ying asked. What's that? Give it back. Luo Binghe enunciated each word, his fists slowly clenched, a treacherous undercurrent surging in the depths of his eyes. Shen Qingchu's fingers involuntarily twitched once, then again, and again. Naturally, he remembered that the Jade Guan Yin was a counterfeit. He also knew that it was Luo Binghe's biggest berserk button. For an entire year, the washerwoman had scrimped and saved on food and utilities, but because she lacked experience, a con man had tricked her into paying a high price for a fake charm. Heartbroken after this, her body had steadily deteriorated. Luo Binghe would undoubtedly be unable to forget this pain for the rest of his life. Thus, this was the one insult that Luo Binghe could never tolerate. As a bystander, Shen Qingchu desperately wanted to reach out, beat up Ming Fan, snatch back the jade pendant, and toss it to Luo Binghe. Also, if he did that, maybe Ming Fan wouldn't thoroughly offend Luo Binghe. Then, later on, he could keep his paltry little life. Oh, see. Thank you. Shut up. You want it back, I'll give it back. Who knows which street stall this cheap thing was purchased from? Ming Fan plucked the pendant from Ning Ying Ying's hands, disgust in his tone. I'm afraid giving it to Shimei would dirty her hands. So he said, but he had not the slightest intention of returning it. Luo Binghe's face was tight. Suddenly, he struck out with both fists, hitting the couple of low-ranked disciples restraining him. Enraged as he was, his blows were not directed by technique. They were random strikes fueled by the anger within. At first he managed to cow these low-ranked disciples, but they quickly realized that he was in truth incredibly weak, and that only his demeanor was impressive. 
Also, Ming Fan was snarling at them. What are you standing there for? He dared to attack his Shixiang. Teach him what it means to respect seniority. At this, they all regained their courage and surrounded Luo Binghe, clobbering him. Ning Ying Ying was scared stiff, her pitiful brain capacity still not understanding how things had progressed to this state. Shixiang! she cried. How could you do this? Hurry up and tell them to stop, or... Or I'll never talk to you ever again. Shimei, don't be angry, Ming Fan said in a panic. I'll tell them to stop hitting this guy, okay? He was distracted. Before he finished speaking, Luo Binghe broke free from the many arms and legs entangling him and sent a fist into Ming Fan's nose. A wild wail. Two twin streams of fresh blood jetted from Ming Fan's nostrils. Although she had been about to burst into tears at the sight of this, Ning Ying Ying couldn't help but let out a stifled laugh. Sister, really, do you like Luo Binghe or do you want to screw him over? Shen Ching Chu howled in his mind. Before this point, Ming Fan might feasibly have let Luo Binghe go. But now that he'd been humiliated in front of his crush, he couldn't back down, no matter what. The two boys twisted into a fighting heap. But no matter how exceptional Luo Binghe's talent, he was still young, and he hadn't been cultivating with proper instruction. It was, for the most part, a one-sided beatdown. Yet Luo Binghe remained silent, teeth clenched. Shen Qingchu wanted desperately to intervene, but the system exploded with a terrifying cascade of alarms. Severe OOC, severe OOC, severe OOC. Important things must be repeated three times. In this situation, Shen Qingchu would choose to smile. He would watch from the sidelines, hands in his sleeves, or personally beat Luo Binghe himself. Was it really going to make him look on while a child was being abused? This was really too much. Even so, Shen Qingchu couldn't afford to take risks. While he was anxiously fretting, a compromise suddenly came to him. Kangcheng Mountain Sect had a minor technique. Plucking leaves, flying flowers. At a glance, it wasn't very useful, just aesthetic and interesting. The novel had described how Luo Binghe used the technique to win the nth woman's affections. As Shen Qingchu had, since his arrival, been furiously reviewing various manuals, he had also recently seen a description of it. He plucked a nearby leaf and channeled a touch of spiritual power into it. The first time, he channeled too much. The leaf couldn't withstand his power and instantly split into several pieces. He succeeded the second time, held the leaf between his fingertips, and gently blew, letting go. The leaf shot toward Ming Fan like an airborne knife. As Ming Fan's long and horrible scream split the air, Shen Qingchu shook out his hand and wiped a bead of sweat from his forehead. No wonder they said that to an expert. Even a flower or tree could be used to hurt people. But he hadn't killed Ming Fan just now, right? Luo Bingye had suffered quite a few punches and kicks, but suddenly it was Ming Fan who staggered backward. Luo Binghe looked up. Fresh blood dripped from his forehead past his eyes, but he hadn't expected to see Ming Fan stretching out his own hand, his palm also covered in blood. Ming Fan stared in disbelief. You dare to use a knife? Due to its fierceness, Ning Ying Ying hadn't risked coming close to their fight, but now she hurried to throw herself between the two. No, no, Aluo didn't use a knife. It wasn't him. Luo Binghe also had no idea what had happened. He closed his mouth tightly and tried to clean the blood from his face. Did you see clearly? Was he holding a knife? Ming Fan interrogated the other disciples as blood seeped out of his back, like he'd been cut with the edge of a sword. The disciples looked around at each other in complete disarray, some shaking their heads, some nodding. Ming Fan was a spoiled and pampered young master, and he had never suffered this level of physical pain. The sight of his own hand covered with blood sent panic surging through his heart. The puzzling thing was that there was no evidence of a weapon either on the ground or on Luo Binghe's slender person. It couldn't have vanished into thin air, right? Shen Qingchu held his breath. His vision suddenly flashed red, and a huge line of floating text popped up before him in a blood red as eye-catching as it was bone-chilling. Violation, OOC, B points minus 10, current B points 90. Shen Qingchu released his breath, relieved. He'd been prepared for a deduction in the realm of 50, or even to lose everything. Only 10 was much better than he'd thought. He'd take the loss for now. There would be future chances to earn those points back. Then, shortly after he let out that breath, Ming Fan pointed to Luo Bing He and yelled, Get him! Shen Qingchu nearly vomited a mouthful of blood straight from his chest. The gang of disciples heard the order and tackled Luo Bingyi. 
Shen Qingqiu unconsciously tore off a nearby handful of leaves and sent them all singing through the air. He regretted it as soon as they left his hand. The fuck am I doing? No matter what happens, Luo Bingyi is the magnificent male lead. It's not like he's never been ganged up on before. Like they could beat him to death. Like hell you need to worry, self. He might have gotten away with the first interference, but now... Fantastic. Even an idiot would notice something was off. Numerous disciples were splattered with blood. They anxiously gathered around Ming Fan, no longer daring to gang up on Luo Binghe. Shixiong, what's going on? Shixiong, I've also been cut. Ming Fan's face was green and white. Only after a long moment did he yell out, Go! Leading his group of lackeys, all covering their backs and holding their arms, he frantically withdrew. They truly came like the wind, and left like it too. Only Ning Ying Ying remained, standing there dumbly for a while. Then she shouted, Ah Luo, were you the one who sent them running just now? Luo Bing He shook his head, expression gloomy. He stood up, straightening with difficulty. Then he bent down again with a tense look, searching the ground for something, turning over fallen leaves, dry twigs, and mud this way and that, over and over again. Shen Qing Chu knew what he was looking for. Naturally, it was that jade pendant, which had been lost in the confusion. He saw it, clear as day. Before fighting, Ming Fan had swung out his arm, and as he did, the pendant's red string had snagged on a branch high above their heads. But Shen Qing Chu couldn't point that out. Also, just after he'd sent the leaves flying, he'd heard that heart-shattering system scream. Violation, OOC, B points minus 10 times 6, current B points, 30. In an instant, he'd fallen below a passing grade. So one leaf equals 10 points. Don't use such simple, crude arithmetic. Ning Ying Ying didn't dare speak. After all, she had caused this entire affair. If not for her big mouth, Luo Binghe would never have suffered a beating. And on top of that, he'd lost his pendant for no good reason. She swiftly began to help Luo Binghe search. They, of course, remained empty-handed, even as it became dark. Luo Binghe stood dumbly in place, staring at the mess of the ground. They had overturned every speck of dirt in sight, but still they hadn't found it. Aluo, if we can't find it, let's just let it be said Ning Ying Ying, a little frightened to see him so dazed and out of his mind. She took his hand. I'm sorry. I'll buy you another one later, all right? Luo Binka paid her no heed. He slowly withdrew his hand and walked toward the forest's edge, head lowered. Ning Ying Ying hurried after him. Shen Ching Chu was truly impressed with himself. These two children had searched for an entire afternoon, and he'd actually gone and watched the whole time. How could he explain that to himself? other than to say that he had too much fucking time on his hands. He waited until they'd gone a good distance, then finally emerged from his hiding place. He raised his head and looked about, then tapped his foot on the ground. In that moment, he experienced what it meant to have a body as light as a swallow, and with great ease, he rose and plucked that jade pendant from where it was caught on a branch. In truth, Shen Qingchu wanted to secretly return it to Luo Binghe, but he was now familiar with the system's rules, that would definitely count as a violation. He didn't have any B-points to squander. After some thought, Shen Ching Chu decided to keep it for the time being. Maybe later, this jade pendant would be of great use. For example, perhaps during a critical moment, when his fate hung by a thread, he could bargain it in exchange for his life. Shen Ching Chu gave this possibility serious consideration. Right then, a line of green text with a pronounced 3D effect jumped into view. Congratulations. Obtained key item, Fake Jade Guanyin X1. For changing the storyline, Shen Qingchu IQ plus 100. Current B points, 130. Please continue to work hard. All the points that had just been deducted were not only restored, he even got more. On top of that, given the influence this Jade Guanyin had on Luo Binghe, it was definitely a high-level item. And it could be used to preserve his life. What a happy surprise. A rush of satisfaction flowed through Shen Qingchu, cleansing him of the gloom that had set in while he crouched in the dark for a whole afternoon. At this moment, even the system's eminently punchable Google Translate-like voice was melodious beyond compare. Meanwhile, outside the forest, Luo Binghe had already left the back of the mountain, and he slowly unclenched his fist. Lying in his palm was a whole green leaf. Its edges were sharp and stained with blood. In the days of Shen Ching Chu's recuperation following his awakening from that inexplicable fever, Yue Ching Yuan came to visit him many times. 
as the sect leader of the world's foremost major cultivation sect, which might be likened to being the principal of a comprehensive cultivation university. His workload had to be heavy. Yet he was still so considerate to his Shidi. As a stranger in a strange land, Shen Qingchu practically wanted to shed tears of gratitude, that the original flavor had actually turned on such a kind superior and fellow disciple, that he had breached their brotherly covenant just like that. It just made clear how much of a scumbag he was. Now that Shidi has rested for several days, has your health improved? Yu Yuan asked, his eyes full of earnest concern as he held one of the bamboo house's porcelain tea bowls. I have long since recovered, said Shen Qingchu lightly waving his folding fan and feeling at home in the atmosphere of brotherly love. I've caused Shixiong such trouble, making him worry. Then I suppose it's about time for Shidi to leave the mountains, said Yue Qingyuan. Is there anything you need? The hand Shen Qingchu was using to fan himself froze. Leave the mountains. Did the illness make you forget? Yue Qingyuan asked, surprised. Didn't you tell me before to leave the matter of Shuanghu City to you? as a training opportunity for your disciples. So it was some troublesome project undertaken by the original flavor. But while Shen Qingchu had been familiarizing himself with this body's spiritual power and techniques, they still weren't second nature. How could he take disciples down from the mountains for training? Just as he was about to summon his resolve and embarrass himself, to renege and say that his body wasn't well after all, the system's unfeeling voice reverberated in his skull. Beginner level quest issued. Location, Shuanghu City. Quest, complete the training. Please click to accept. At the same time, the quest synopsis popped up before him with two options on the bottom. The left saying, accept. The right saying, reject. So this was a beginner-level quest. Shen Qingchu's gaze lingered on accept for a while. The option blinked green, a ding sounded, and the system said, Quest successfully accepted. Please thoroughly read the provided files and make your preparations. We wish you a swift success. Shen Qingchu came back to himself. Naturally, I remember, he said while smiling. It's just these days I've rested too much and grown slow. I had almost forgotten about this matter. I'll head out in a few days. Yue Qingyuan nodded. If you're not completely recovered, there's no need to force yourself. There's no rush to train your disciples either. You especially don't need to personally take care of this matter. Shen Qingchu agreed, still smiling but he couldn't help giving Yue Qingyuan two extra glances. Zhang Men Shixiong, your current role? It's getting a bit too much like a quest-giving NPC. All affairs on Qingjing Peak, whether large or small, were handed to and looked after by Shen Qingchu's trusted subordinate, Ming Fan. Shen Qingchu had discovered that in matters that didn't involve a certain protagonist, Ming Fan was surprisingly efficient and intelligent. They were able to set out the following day. Before leaving Qingjing Peak, Shen Qingchu briefly inspected his appearance. Teal robes, loose sash, sword at left hip, fan in right hand, elegant, cultured, reliable, graceful, a properly otherworldly being. In short, absolutely not OOC, perfect. At the bottom of the long hundred-step stone stairway, waiting by the mountain gates, was the carriage prepared for Shen Qingchu, as well as a collection of horses for his accompanying disciples. Are you kidding? Shen Qingchu muttered in his head. In the end, this is still a cultivation setting. Why aren't we flying on swords? Even in a magical setting like Harry Potter, not every wizard goes out riding brooms. The system coolly replied. It would be too conspicuous. You sure are knowledgeable. Shen Qingchu muttered. Did you do business over at Harry Potter's before? The system typed out a giant line of hovering symbols. Dot, dot, dot. In all these years of the system's operation, Shen Qingchu might have been the first person bored enough to act so familiarly with it, let alone to fuck around with it. On the other hand, if he thought about it, this setup made sense. This trip down the mountains was for the sake of training, and the majority of these disciples were young and lacked experience. They hadn't even claimed their personal swords yet. According to the traditions of Kang Chiang Mountain Sect, only once a disciple's cultivation reached a certain stage could they go to Wanjian Peak, one of the twelve peaks, to pick a suitable blade. Though it was said that the person picked the sword, in truth, the sword also picked the person. If a person with subpar talent insisted on taking a top-class sword capable of condensing spiritual energy collected from the heavens and earth, 
It would be the equivalent of a beautiful woman marrying an ugly man or arranging fresh flowers and cow dung. As you can imagine, the sword would be entirely unwilling. Luo Binghe's real golden finger only activated when he came upon his own personal sword, the mystical Shin Mo. Shen Ching Chu entered the carriage. Its appearance wasn't especially ornate, but the interior was both spacious and comfortable, and a small incense burner faintly smoldered within. Once he sat, Shen Ching Chu had a sudden premonition that something wasn't quite right. He abruptly poked out his fan and raised it to lift the curtains. The second he looked outside, he felt he should have been struck blind by the sight. No wonder he'd thought that the silhouette hurrying back and forth around the carriage seemed familiar. The person everyone was ordering around to do miscellaneous tasks was none other than the great male lead, Luo Binghe. Just then, Luo Binghe hauled the last item onto the carriage, a white jade chessboard that was mandatory luggage on all of Shen Ching Chu's trips, though it usually went unused. He raised his head to see Shen Ching Chu observing him with a complicated expression and jolted slightly. Respectfully, he said, Shizun. The injuries Luo Binghe had received from Shen Ching Chu's pre-fever discipline were just about healed. The bruises on his face had vanished, and one could finally clearly see what he looked like. Even though he was young, his features still soft and immature, no degree of youth could conceal the handsome grace within him. On top of that, he walked and moved with a shining air. Who would ever guess that this was Ching Jing Peak's most miserable flower bud, which had been ravaged by wind and rain for many years? Although Luo Binghe was doing the rough work of moving luggage and equipment, his attitude was meticulous. It was hard not to be moved by that earnest and focused bearing. It was especially hard for Shen Ching Chu, who already had some fondness for this male lead. He was, indeed, very fond of this ruthlessly decisive protagonist, who was so clear-cut with who deserved his kindness and who his hatred. After staring for a moment, Shen Ching Chu made an O oh sound, then pulled back his fan, dropping the curtains. It had to be said, the male lead was inescapably the male lead. Even with how downtrodden this kid was, with no history, no prospects, nor parents to love him, it was no wonder that there were still so many first, second, third, and fourth female leads ready to hang off his every word, trail in his wake, and otherwise throw themselves at him. Good looks were the true way of the world. This also explained why there was always some cannon fodder or another who found him an eyesore, and who wanted to vent by beating him, until his head looked like a pig's. Then something else occurred to Shen Ching Chu. That's not right. If the total number of traveling disciples, including Luo Binghe, was ten, and there were only nine horses, then weren't they missing one? All right. Even if he'd thought with his toes, he'd have known who to blame. As expected, Ming Fan's gleeful voice cut through the snickering outside. Actually, we're short on horses, so we have no choice but to inconvenience Shidi this time. Although, since Shidi's foundation is poor, it's perfect. You can also take this chance to train. Short on horses my ass. In recent years, of all the major sects, Kang Chiang Mountain Sect had become number one when it came to cultivation. It had no real business rivals. That it was overflowing with wealth could be left unsaid. In short, like they'd want for even a single horse. What? Ming Fan paused, truly well versed in digging his own cannon fodder grave. What sort of expression is that? You dissatisfied? I wouldn't dare, said Luo Binghe evenly, neither haughty nor humble. At this point, a young girl's bell like laugh cut the air. Ning Ying Ying had arrived. Shik Xiong, what are you two talking about? Shen Ching Chu held his forehead. Really, young lady, your timing. Ning Ying Ying was a powerful catalyst in the continued worsening of Ming Fan's and Luo Binghe's relationship. Whenever she appeared, Luo Binghe was in for no shortage of suffering, and Ming Fan was in for an equal amount of personal grave digging. Once again, Shen Ching Chu tentatively lifted the carriage curtains a little, dithering over whether he should speak. As expected, he beheld Ning Ying Ying excitedly waving her hand. Ah, Luo, not enough horses? Come ride with me. She really does bring a lot of hatred down on Luo Binghe. So it is known, although this type of plot, wherein the downtrodden protagonist receives special attention from a beauty, is a satisfying trope often seen on Zhang Dian literature. It is also the likeliest to incite the envy of others and subsequent persecution. In this moment, if Luo Binghe accepted Ning Ying Ying's suggestion, 
he could forget about getting any peace on this trip. Shen Jingchu could no longer sit by and bear it. Ying Ying, don't make a fuss. Men and women mustn't be too intimate. No matter how close you are with your shidi, there ought to be limits. Ming Fan, we're dawdling. Why haven't we set out yet? Ming Fan was overjoyed, no doubt thinking, Shizun and I are on the same page. He hastily urged the group to depart. Ning Ying Ying pouted but said nothing. That little skit over for now, Shen Qingchu let his mind wander from it and returned to silently reading the files spread out on his system desk. This trip wasn't to commemorate the first plot line to take him down the mountain. It was, most importantly, concerned with a beginner-level quest that would determine whether he could unfreeze the OOC function. Shen Qingchu couldn't afford to treat it with anything but the utmost seriousness. The file described the location, a small city several tens of kilometers away from Kongqiang Mountain Sect. Recently, a number of murders had occurred within it. Already, nine people were dead. Every victim shared a common fate. The skin on their body had been completely, meticulously peeled off from head to toe and with perfect precision, as if the skin had never been attached to the deceased body at all. It was enough to horrify anyone. Therefore, the murderer had come to be known as the Skinner Demon. The Skinner Demon's chosen victims were all young, beautiful women. Therefore, in Shuanghu City, every family with daughters, wives, or concubines shut and locked their doors the moment night fell. Despite this, they had been unable to stop the Skinner Demon from coming and going as it pleased. A succession of nine horrible deaths, yet the officials had no idea what to do. The city's people were in a state of panic. There were even rumors that it was the work of a ghost. Otherwise, how could the culprit come and go without a trace? Several influential families had met together, and at last decided to send someone to Kangcheong Mountain Sect to plead for assistance from the immortal cultivators. Shen Qingchu had already read this information multiple times, but no matter how many times he read it, it wasn't the least bit helpful. The hell is a Skinner demon. Never heard of it. Is this a newly added plotline or a hidden one? Is it dangerous? Is it strong? Am I even going to be able to deal with it? This isn't what we agreed to. In response to these questions, the system said, What isn't? You were once a novel reader. Novels are a type of artistic creation, and in any artistic creation, there are always decisions that must be made and things that must be left out. Now that you've become part of this world, you naturally have to experience everything yourself regardless of importance. You must follow every plot line to the very end, even ones omitted from the original work. Shen Qingchu had no say in any of it. As such, he had diligently trained for numerous days, single-mindedly seeking to make his abilities second nature, lest he croak at the hands of some no-name monster before he ever had the chance to die beneath the male lead's feet, like a general passing away before his first victory. Luo Binghu was still outside, so at no moment did Shen Qingchu dare to relax his vigil, keeping an eye out for any untoward activity. At the same time, he rummaged through the carriage interior. Every comfort one could imagine was on hand. Shen Qingchu managed to dredge up five or six different tea sets, and he was speechless at the sight of them. No matter that in his past life he could have counted as a wealthy second gen, he still hadn't been this pointlessly indulgent in his pursuit of first world affluenza, okay? At this time, a wave of cackles rolled in from outside the carriage. He swept a glance outside. Luo Binghe trailed alone at the back of the group, at times walking, at times running. From time to time, horses encircled him, purposely kicking up a cloud of dust until he was filthy and caked with it. Shen Qingchu couldn't help clutching the handle of his fan, knuckles itching faintly. This was only a book, and all the people were constructs, imaginary characters. Logically, Shen Qingchu was very clear on this fact. But when a character was actually being taunted and bullied right before his eyes, it was just flat-out unrealistic to expect him to be completely unmoved. Having attempted to dissuade them several times to no avail, Ning Yingying finally realized her interference only made things worse. She anxiously urged her horse toward the carriage and called out, Shizun, the Shixiong, look at them. What about them? Shen Qingchu asked placidly. Though his heart was moved, he didn't show it. They're bullying someone so viciously, yet you're not telling them off, she said defiantly, her voice carrying with the strength of her indignation. If they keep on like this, Shizun, what are you teaching your disciples to become? Even though she was directly tattling on them, 
Ming Fan and his lackeys didn't feel any pressure at all. They were all used to the prior Shen Qingchu silently permitting these actions. The harsher their bullying of Luo Binghe, the happier they made their teacher. Why would they exercise restraint? Ming Fan was happiest of all. He was so sure that on that day at the back of the mountain, Luo Binghe had used some manner of sorcery he'd learned from who knew where. Today, Shizun was here, and he'd be crushed. Shen Qing Chiu made an O oh sound. Then he spoke a single line. Luo Binghe, come here. Luo Binghe's expression went blank. Accustomed to this call, he gave his quiet assent and walked over. At first, everyone was still riding high on schadenfreude, thinking that Shen Qing Chu was calling Luo Binghe over to grab him by the ear and discipline him. What happened next shattered their entire worldview. Shen Qing Chu used his fan to lift the curtains, then jerked his chin at Luo Binghe before shooting a glance at the carriage interior. Even though he didn't speak, the meaning couldn't have been clearer. Ah Luo, hurry and get on, Ning Ying Ying said happily. Shizun is letting you ride with him. Like thunder on a ah, clear day. If they hadn't known their master so well and for so long, Ming Fan and his fellows would have suspected that Shen Qing Chu had been possessed by a demon. Luo Binghe had also frozen in astonishment, but his reaction was nevertheless swift. He paused for only a second before saying, Many thanks to Shizun. Then he stepped into the carriage, ever conscientious, and sat straight-backed in a corner. His hands and feet remained tucked in, like he was afraid that his patched clothes would dirty the interior. Warning. Warning rejected, said Shen Qingchu. I wasn't OOC. Shen Qingchu would never do anything to alleviate Luo Binghe's troubles. Verdict, OOC level 100%. Have you carefully examined this character's complicated inner world? Shen Qingchu countered. Of course, he would never do anything purely to alleviate Luo Binghe's troubles. But right now, my goal is to prevent Ning Yingying from losing faith in me as her teacher. Yingying is my dearest little disciple, and she begged me. How could I let her plea go unheard? Dot, dot, dot. So my actions are completely in line with Shen Qingchu's internal logic, Shen Qingchu declared. Your warning is invalid. During their exchanges over the last couple of days, Shen Qingchu had gradually figured out a handful of the system's quirks. It had rules, but these rules were not rigid. As that was the case, there was a bit of leeway for bargaining. As he'd hoped for the time being, the system couldn't think of an argument to enforce its deduction. Riding high on the delight of victory in this first battle, Shen Qing Chu couldn't help but laugh. However, Shen Qing Chu had, in that moment, been quietly sitting in the carriage, seemingly meditating with his eyes closed in a trance. When Luo Binghe suddenly heard him laugh, he couldn't resist stealing a glance at him. To tell the truth, it would have been a lie to say that Luo Binghe wasn't surprised. Even though he'd always revered Shen Qing Chu, he had no illusions about how his master treated and looked at him. At first, he'd thought that if Shen Qing Chu asked him to get in the carriage, there must be something even more terrible waiting for him within. And he had mentally prepared himself for it. He hadn't expected Shen Qing Chu to not bother with him at all. Instead, focusing only on himself as he began to meditate. Luo Binghe thought for a moment. It seemed to him that he had never been this close to his teacher before, and that he had never had an opportunity to carefully examine Shen Qing Chu like this. Appearance-wise, you couldn't complain about him. Perhaps Shen Qing Chu couldn't qualify as supremely beautiful, but he was certainly good-looking, and you wouldn't tire of looking at him. The profile of his face, in three-quarter view, seemed to have been carved by creeks and mountain springs, and when not fixed in a cold scowl, it became gentle and bright. As soon as Shen Qingchu opened his eyes, he found Luo Binghe staring at him. He saw a glimpse of the future Luo Binghe's unique grace, that of eyes like cold stars, a soft and radiant smile, with muted words and quiet laughter. Luo Binghe had been caught red-handed, and right as he was struck, lost as to what to do, Shen Qingchu smiled at him. This smile was purely unconscious, but Luo Binghe felt like he'd been pricked by a small, fine thorn. He quickly averted his gaze and became increasingly awkward, unsure of what he was feeling. Very soon, Shen Qingchu couldn't bring himself to smile anymore. The system had delivered a notification. Violation, OOC, B points minus 5, current B points, 165. Sayeth Shen Qingchu, even a brief smile warrants a deduction, 
saith the system, most righteously. OOC is OOC. End of chapter 1